Hey, welcome back to Everyday Economics, the podcast that you learn about the economic world happening around you every day. I'm your host, Chris Krug, CEO of the 501c3 nonprofit, nonpartisan Franklin News Foundation. Everyday Economics production of America's Talking Network. You can subscribe to all of our podcasts at americastalking.com. To support Everyday Economics, please make a tax-deductible charitable contribution by clicking the link in the show description. We are recording this episode on Friday, October 11th. Happy Columbus Day weekend, everyone. Joining me as always, Dr. Orfe Devangi, PhD economist. Dr. O, we have witnessed, uh, some of us from afar, some of us very up close, uh, devastation from hurricanes here in the United States. For, uh, first one that was really bad and damaging was Beryl. And then there was Helene, which is just absolutely just wrought horrible, horrible terror and, and destruction to, to the people in North Carolina and and Tennessee and parts of South Carolina too. And uh, just this, this past week, um, we had Hurricane Milton blow right through uh, the Tampa area. And the pictures uh, are, they don't do it justice. You know, talking to, to my friends that are in the Tampa Bay area, it's incredibly yeah. sad. I mean, yeah. it tore the roof off the baseball stadium. Yeah, you know, I mean, it just you know, in the I mean, it and it's just it's a it's an absolute mess. Yeah, it's it's families that are displaced. It's uh, houses that are destroyed. It's memories that are lost. It's businesses that are uh, you know upside down, uh, literally, right, upside down. And so, uh, uh, I mean, you know, you don't want to you know you don't want to necessarily try to quantify these things in it, in monetary it, it, terms. However. Right now, I mean, Fortune magazine, you know, um, I, 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 I'm going to I'm going to we'll poke this number uh, a little bit. But but Fortune is suggesting that there's been a, a, a already like a trillion dollars worth of damage to commercial properties. That's a headline straight from Forbes. That's just commercial properties. Helene, uh, they estimated a week ago, Axios said that the damages could be thirty five billion um and uh you know uh barrel i don't have that number you know like right at, at, the t at you know like at at a point of access but you but it, it that would have to be in the high hundreds of millions if not you know in excess of a, a billion dollars worth of damage what does something like a hurricane and, and and you know let alone a series of hurricanes like we've seen and the season's not over yet what does that do to the to the economy? I mean, it doesn't matter how you look at it, whether it's hurricanes or climate change or, uh, or heat or uh, right. It actually lowers economic growth. It lowers GDP. Uh, that's the literature. And uh, and why? Well, look, you know, you got all this destruction. You got people that are um, you got sub supply chain disruptions. You got uh, uh, agricultural uh, food. Uh, issues you got uh the labor market effects you got workers that are basically not working right displaced um you know which means wages employment probably fall in the short term uh and and it's hard to make up those that that gap right uh productivity declines lower investment especially in in climate affected areas right um and i want to I, I, I want to go back because i you yeah. know I, I don't want to short shrift hurricane barrel estimates on hurricane barrel are between 28 and 32 billion dollars yeah so, okay and, um, and that's the one and that's and that's and like hurricane barrel at this point you know they're alphabetical right yeah, <clears throat> barrel yeah. was the first of the the big three it's mm -hmm. uh, and i feel terrible about this i i not that i've forgotten about hurricane barrel but we it's been somewhat you know uh dwarfed by Helene and Milton. Yes. Yes. So so anyway, I just want to yes. I just want to provide some facts totally, there. Totally. And and these things are are the, we've seen this where I remember Hurricane Katrina back in uh, 2005. I mean, we we've, we've seen the the damage. Uh it just so happens it's more and more frequent, right? And uh and maybe worse than it used to be. Uh and but the the and the cost is just rising and rising. Then you also have the government Facing increased fiscal burdens from disaster relief, 
reconstruction, social welfare programs, right? Right. Uh, on top of on top of existing, uh, uh, you know, public debt issues, large fiscal deficits. That's right? it. Okay. Then well, we got insurance and, costs. Oh, time out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time out. Yeah. And international spending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, the dollars right. that, the got... dollars that leave the United States to 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 fund wars in foreign countries, a dollar yeah. can be spent one time. <laughs> Well, look, I mean, again, governments, governments have to make decisions and some people, they have to weigh the, the, they have to weigh the, uh, the, the, the allocations carefully, right? And like, how do we, how do we make these fiscal decisions, right? Uh, we got geopolitical crises, yep. uh, abroad, uh, that could make their way back here that could potentially affect us in terms of food and access to food and, uh, and certain uh, commodities, uh, right? Uh, thinking about the oil, oil in the Middle East, we got we got all kinds of problems going mm -hmm. on. And then all of a sudden, on top of that, we get these hurricanes that come out of the war. Um, insurance, I mean, anybody, I mean, I see this all the time because I deal in housing, right? And right. insurance costs have gone up a lot. It doesn't matter where you live. Insurance costs have gone up. But if you're in those areas, for some people, it even means they can't even get insurance anymore. Right. Um, and right. I think, and again, and that's just absolutely terrible what's going on. The impact is to, is is unbelievable. It's huge. Um, and so, um, so, yeah, that's the economic impact of hurricanes. Now, there's some research that says that, you know, as... As these things happen, some of the people who are, and again, only the people who are able to do so will relocate to nearby counties, mm -hmm. unaffected counties. Mm -hmm. And that might actually stimulate the nearby unaffected counties. Right. Uh, because, right, they have more people moving in, people spending there, right? But unfortunately, it's very often only the haves, the people who are able, right, who have the financial means to relocate rapidly to go and buy a house or rent a house in the nearby county, to go restart. Uh, but there's so much devastation that the majority of people are, are really struggle. But, but you know, all right, so let me bring it back around to the cost. And like I said, I mean, there, there, there's, you know, there's been significant loss of life. And, and I mean, that's first and foremost. And, and but in terms of like, you know, how this ultimately gets paid for and and the and and what the government's role is in that the US government's role in that how do you inter how do you interpret that i mean we talked about well, insurance yeah and, i mean that, that, that's that's, personal, it's the, that's personal it's, property right which is largely where the focus is there but when you're talking about like roads being you know like completely yeah. washed away like like they have been I, I take that route when I go south. I'd like to take that route down through Knoxville and, you know, arcing across Interstate 40 and then down like, that's 26 right. like, like, through Asheville. Like many, like many people. And, and, and that that is essentially what you pay taxes for, right? Isn't it? You pay taxes because you want your government to be able to step in as the insurer of last resort. Mm -hmm. As the right, uh, you know, step in because you collectively we've paid taxes so that our government can step in to help us in a time of crisis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to that I think that's what government's supposed to be there for. Uh, and so uh, ultimately, you know, you know, you're going to have a government having to compete with other priorities, but ultimately the duty is to step in and help the the large uh, number of people yeah. that are... There, I, I think of this really interesting economic paper in the Review of Economics and Statistics uh, published a little over a decade ago that says, look, you know, sometimes we don't see the big economic impact on aggregate. Like when we look at national statistics, part of it is because, you know, uh, about a third of the you know the, the the population will tend to relocate and go out and basically boost economic growth in other counties that are unaffected uh but that's still that's still just a third there's 
two thirds, more than two thirds of the population that is uh, facing devastation, and and the government should be there to step in and uh, and help. Yeah, these are taxpayers well, like you well, and I. Pray for the people that have been affected for this or affected by this, and um, we probably should call it to an end there. We're gonna, we'll, we'll, you know, I think we should make a commitment also that we stay with this story. And Absolutely. I, I mean, certainly they are at the center square, but I mean, you know, as far as it goes with with everyday economics on the on the rebuild side of this. So thanks again. Uh, for Orfe Dibangi, this has been Chris Krug. Subscribe to Everyday Economics and dozens of other quality podcasts at americastalking.com.